I blow a tire on the highway as I take you into the foothills of Colorado where all the RV parks are full, so I have to boondock. Welcome to Glamping Doodles. This is the show where we take you around this great country of ours traveling by RV. We give you a taste of what the cruising life is like and have some fun along the way. So buckle up and come along for the ride as we go cruising around the USA by land. In the previous video, I failed miserably trying to eat a 72 ounce steak in Amarillo, Texas. Still a bit of a mess in here, but uh Kind of working on it. I got all this place cleaned up. I'm not keeping that thing outside. That thing's a bit uh, pricey. So it lives right there. But uh, anyway, kind of doing some editing here. Just wrapping it up, uploading a new video to Sailing Doodle. So check that one out if you're not watching that. And please subscribe to this one as well. Uh, gonna start packing up the RV here, get it ready to go. Kind of a, just a chill place to hang out. I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna head to go ahead and head to Breckenridge now and just spend about a week in Breckenridge. So looking forward to that. But right now, I gotta close everything up, get everything ready to go, put away uh, to get uh, underway. I was starting the day in Pueblo, Colorado. I hadn't set up the awning, so breaking out camp was pretty easy. Just pull in the chairs and roll up the carpet. This is my triathlon bike. It's a Cervelo P5 with zip wheels. You know anything about road bikes. It's a pretty nice bike. It's got electronic shifting and all that stuff. It's it's pretty it's pretty top of the line. So this thing does not ride outside the bike, uh, outside the RV. Uh, on you know, put one of those like uh, hooks on there with a bike on the back. Yeah, great until somebody jacks this or rear ends it. Uh -huh. Basically, uh, when we're underway on the, in the RV, I just put the bike right here. The couch slides over and it's nice and secure. In my opinion, having a slide out makes all the difference in an RV. walk around, uh, put the jacks up first, and then do my walk around and make sure we're ready to go. All right, we're all set to go here. Um, kind of the plan today is head to Colorado Springs. I've got a reservation for tomorrow in Breckenridge for about five days. And that place, it looks pretty cool. It's kind of a little pricey, but um, it's right on a river. It looks really cool. But it's about four and a half miles outside of Breckenridge, or four miles outside of Breckenridge, the town. And I like to be able to go in for dinners and stuff like that. And I know I have my triathlon bike here, but that's way too expensive to like take to a restaurant and chain up somewhere. Not going to do it. So in Colorado Springs, I'm going to go there. There's a bicycle shop. I've been wanting to get an electric bicycle anyway. I mean, you know, I love getting my exercise. I exercise every day. I ride for maybe an hour every day or run for an hour every day. But if I'm gonna ride my bike to go get dinner or something like that, I don't wanna be all sweaty. So I'm gonna get maybe an electric bike and I've been wanting to get one for this anyway. Kind of a cool toy to have, I think, for an RV. So let's go. Drowning in your words from the stories that you carry. I would never judge, don't you ever. Well, I've got a flat tire. I didn't even notice it. Uh, so there's a dual axle, not dual axle, but it's there's a, it's like a dually on the back uh, axle there. So it's uh, you know got four tires on that axle. Uh, I didn't even feel it. All of a sudden, a guy driving next to me pulls up and he's like, "Your tire, your tire." So pulled over, checked it out. Uh, sure enough, uh, yeah. So now, luckily, there is a tire shop about a mile away. So I'm gonna go real slow, 20 miles an hour and uh, go there and get the tire change. That's nice uh, when you got a dually like that. The other tire's picking up the load back there. It would've been pretty bad. It would've got pretty squirrely just going down to one tire there. But here at the little place, seeing if they've got the, a tire that matches, get them checked out, changed out, have them check the other tires while we're at it. Didn't take too long, about 45 minutes dealing with all that. Oh well, what you gonna do? But, uh, Headed back to the bike shop, check out an electric bike to have on here. I kind of I mentioned that earlier. And then uh, find a place to stay for the night. Find an RV park. It's kind of hard to find one lately. Well, I called every RV park within 15, 20 miles of Colorado Springs. Every single one of them was booked. Well, that's not true. There was one that had to spot, but they don't accept RVs that are more than 10 years old. And this one's 15 years old. I guess, whatever. But uh, so now I am boondocking here at uh, Bass Pro Shops. 
A lot of places will let you boondock, obviously Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, and some places like Walmart's. We stayed up till the morning Talking till the first light of dawn A lot of places like Bass Pro Shots, some Walmarts, and uh, you know, kind of outdoorsy places and stuff like that will actually, you can see all the other RVs that are here right now because there's really nowhere to go. Um, and they've got a nice big parking lot. And, uh, you know, I went in and did some shopping. There's nothing I really needed, so I didn't buy anything. But I went in and looked anyway. Yeah, boondocking. So I filled up my water tanks the other day, so I should be good to go. Self-sufficient here. It's uh, cool enough that I don't think I really even need to run the generator tonight for air conditioning. So just have some uh, doors and windows open, and it'll be nice and cool. I'm going to wait for happy hour here, and I'm going to head over to this little smokehouse tavern. and. There you go, that'll be my afternoon. This is the e-bike I bought. I'll give you a proper review on it. I've only driven around the parking lot at the mall where I bought it. Um, but it's pretty quick, it does over 20 miles an hour. But uh, I'll do a proper review of it tomorrow. I just don't wanna to have to pull it out in the parking lot and drive around here and do that. But uh, I've gotta figure out a way to like, cause it's not real convenient pulling this bike inside. Oh, I have to figure something out. I have to get a, they say like a normal bike rack cause these are heavier, won't work on the back. I have to get some kind of tow hitch on the back for the bikes. I don't know, we'll see. Well, I slept pretty well here at uh, the uh, Bass Pro Shops. Um, really quiet, honestly, really quiet. And uh, it got it was, up here in Colorado, I mean, it's it was down in the 50s last night. So, I mean, I, I definitely needed a blanket. So, pretty nice and quiet. A bunch of other RVs. Like, uh, after, before I went to bed, two or three, four more showed up. I mean... There are just not many uh, available RV parks right now. They're all full. I'm stopping at the Harbor Freight today before I get going to see about finding a um, like a hitch rack for the bike here. This thing takes up a lot of space in here, especially now when I close this uh, whole wall right here, there'll be very little space. Very little space. <laughs> Yeah, not much space here now. Kind of hard to get by. Don't want to be doing that on a regular basis. So I'm going to get a bumper, like cargo mount that holds 500 pounds. And this thing weighs, I don't know, with the battery, probably 30, 40 pounds. But, uh, you know, I'll take the battery off when I have it on the hitch in the back. Taking the scenic route through the mountains here, uh, it's a little bit slower, but it's prettier for sure. Uh, hopefully the grades aren't too steep, you know, going up hills, but I guess you'd be doing that anyway, but it's beautiful through here. Uh, I wish I'd cleaned the window first. Uh, when I stop for gas, I'll uh, clean the windshield and get a better view. It was a beautiful drive heading through the mountains. Well, I didn't see which pass it was, but 9,500 feet. Uh, I could see the fuel gauge going down you know, going uphill like that, <clears throat> up at a high altitude, but hopefully downhill for a while now. Get some of that gas mileage back. Some of these switchbacks are pretty uh, tight here. I mean, 10 mile an hour turns there. Uh, and going up there, that was Hoosier Pass just went over. Uh, I'll have to look up and see, I'll put it on the uh, link, uh, or I'll just put a little flash there how high it really was, but pretty high up there and uh, Going up the hill at only about 40 miles an hour. I have a line of cars behind me, but what can be done? Well, I should have turned the camera on as I was going, as I entered Breckenridge, but that's Breckenridge. Uh, a lot of people out today. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of, pretty busy. A lot busier than I kind of expected it to be. I haven't really spent much time here, mostly in uh, the mountains up here. I've spent time in uh, Telluride, Aspen. I haven't, I haven't done it in Vail. I haven't really done Breckenridge much, though. In war, there's never an option to run. It doesn't get much better than the mountains of Colorado in the summertime. Oh, oh, Geronimo. Tears keep on falling, the nighttime is out. Oh, oh, Geronimo. Had a good night here. Uh, this is the Tiger Run RV Resort. Uh, not real happy with I mean, it's a beautiful spot and a good location. Kind of pricey, but you know, I'm just not real happy with the way things happened here. I had a place reserved on the river, 
and they said that's only for RVs 36 feet or bigger. I'm like, well, I'm 33. Who cares? They said, well, that's our policy. I mean, I'm like, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm paying the money. It's the same pay, same rate. Uh, whatever. But yet the big ones, can, yeah, who cares? Whatever. It's annoying. So I am going to go find another place to go because they only had the one night available in this spot. So anyway, but going to go meet my friends over in uh, Utah. They're at Flaming Gorge. So we're going to head over there today. So, but I took the, uh, it's a Pedego element. It's an electric bike, really cool actually. It'll do 20, 21 miles an hour uh, just on the motor alone. Obviously if you pedal, it'll go faster. I'm sure it would go a lot faster than 20, but you know, they have a governed for battery life. Uh, it's supposed to go 20 miles, um, 20 to 40 miles, depending on how much you pedal. And it's got a removable battery. I've got the battery inside charging right now but with a key lock on it so you can lock up the battery so nobody can just steal your battery. And um, it's a little pricey, it was about $2,000, but for getting around, I mean, it's not like they have a whole lot of taxis or Ubers around here, you know? And it was four and a half, four miles into Breckenridge. And I took this in for dinner last night and it was really great. It was a 15 minute ride each way. You know, wasn't hard at all. I'll tell you what was hard yesterday was, did 25 miles on this bike. It's a Cervelo P5 with zip wheels. Uh, it's not really a climbing bike, but did, uh, the max elevation of 9,488 feet did 25 miles and, uh, over 1,200 feet of elevation gain. It was a hard ride, hardest ride I've had in a long time, but, so I didn't really film much other than that. Um, today, like I said, have been heading to Flaming Gorge, so I'll film more of that there. I'll give you a better review on the bike when we get there, show you some stuff while it's under, while, you know, it's in motion and all that. And then uh, it's about a five hour drive today, so planning, you know, I always add an hour for fuel and just going slower. So I plan on six hours today. It's a little after nine. Hopefully I'll be there by three. All right. Already did my walk around. Uh, still got to put the jacks up. That's pretty easy to do right here. I got my control panel. I think I showed it to you the other day. I just turn them off and I sink down. And I got lights on there to tell me they're all up. So I'll turn the system off now and we're good to go. Six hours, here we come. So yesterday I had full water tanks because I wasn't sure if I was gonna have to boondock or not because they were giving me grief about coming here. Um, you know, about, oh, they only have the one spot for one day, whatever. So I, my water tanks were full just in case I needed to boondock because I had to boondock the other day. So climbing up the mountains, you know, an extra 300 pounds of water in the back, you know, so today I actually emptied the water tank. It's, I mean, all but empty. Uh, and uh, that way, uh, a little less weight carrying up and down the hills. Mountains, rather. Pretty steep coming here. I'm doing about 30 miles an hour up the hill. Uh, switchbacks all the way up and down this year, but 28 miles to go. So getting there. There was a long delay in Steamboat Springs, like an hour. They were doing road constructions forever but other than that been pretty good the road on this last little stretch has been pretty bad actually on the on the uh, western side of Colorado has been pretty bad but once I got into uh, Utah here I am in Utah now by the way the roads are actually a lot better but they're not parked there's no there's no markings on the road or anything so kind of interesting and it's really steep well when my GPS said I got 30 26 miles, 25 miles, but 34 minutes. It's like, oh, I wonder why it's gonna be so slow. Well, that's why. Dirt road up the hill. It's bumpy. I take back all the nice things I just said about Utah roads.